let's go back to the apples that cost $3 per apple. We've already seen that that means that if you buy one apple, the total amount you will spend um, would be $3 on those apples. Okay, so let's set that out uh, more clearly. Let's say that you buy one apple. How much will you spend on those apples? $3. That's the information that the price gives us. Now, let me point something out. If I tell you that the price of apples is $3 per apple, that means that if you bought one apple, it would cost you $3. If I tell you that the price of apples is $3 per apple, does that mean that you actually bought exactly one apple? Well, no. Just because I told you the price of apples is $3 per apple, that doesn't mean that you bought exactly one apple. Um, you might have bought two apples, or four apples, or 40 apples. Or, it's totally possible that you didn't buy any apples. You might have gone to the store and said, $3 per apple? That's ridiculous! And then you might have bought no apples. So just because we're, um, so notice here we're saying that if you bought one apple, then it would cost you $3. This is a hypothetical statement. If you hypothetically bought one apple, it would cost you $3. $3. However, so far I haven't told you anything about how many apples you actually bought. Maybe you bought one apple, maybe you bought five apples. It's totally possible that you didn't buy any apples at all. So this gives us some other useful insight into ratio units. And this is something that we're going to see is not just true of prices, but is also true of other ratio units in physics and chemistry, or pretty much any ratio unit. Ratio units don't tell you what is actually happening they tell you about something hypothetical. Ratio units always give you hypothetical information about what could happen. If I tell you the price of apples is $3 for one apple, I'm not telling you that you actually bought one apple. I'm just telling you what would happen if you did decide to buy one apple. So this is another insight that we have now into ratio units. They give us hypothetical information. They don't tell us what actually happened. Now, somebody who had never really heard of prices before, once I explained to them that um, the price tells you how much you have to spend on one apple, the person might say, well, you know, that's really useless. I don't see why anybody would ever care about prices. Who, what, what good is it to know about prices? Nobody's going to go to a store and buy just one apple. That, that seems very rare. How often do you go to the store and buy just one apple? Uh, almost never. So at, at first it seems like it's useless to know the price because the price just tells you how much you have to pay for one apple. It seems useless to know that because you very rarely only buy one apple. Uh, well, obviously, if you're accustomed to prices, you know that prices actually give you very useful information. Even though the price only tells you directly how much it would cost you to buy one apple, it's very easy once you know the price to figure out how much it would cost you to buy any number of apples. For example, let's say that at the same store you actually decided to buy two apples. How much would that cost you? Well, this ratio doesn't tell us directly. It only tells us directly how much one apple costs. One apple costs three dollars. Uh, but it's not too hard to figure it out. Um, the first apple is going to cost you three dollars, and then the second apple is going to cost you another three dollars. So how much does it cost you to buy the two apples in total? Six dollars. The first apple was three dollars, then the next apple was three dollars, so that's six dollars total. Or you could just say, um, since each apple cost three dollars and you bought two of them, three times two is six. So you could figure this out as three plus three equals six, or you could figure this out as two times three equals six. Either way, we can use the price to figure out how much uh, the two apples would cost. Or let's say you decide to buy three apples. How much would it cost you to buy three apples at this store? Well, you could just start here. We know the two apples would cost you six dollars, and then if you want one more apple, that's another three dollars. So that would be nine dollars total. Or you could use multiplication. Um, since each apple costs three dollars and you're buying three of them, three times three is nine. This is something that uh, should be pretty easy for, uh, for, uh, for us all, because we all have experience with buying stuff and prices. Let's say you decided to buy four apples. Well, that would cost you another $3. So that would be $12 total. 
or you could just say 4 times 3 is 12. Let's say you wanted to buy 60 apples. How much would you have to spend on that? Well, you could solve this by addition. You could say, um, I have to add 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 60 times, because each apple, uh, each of the 60 apples costs $3. Uh, but the easy way to do that is just multiplication. Um, since each apple costs uh, $3 and we're getting 60 of them, the total price would be 60 times 3, or $180. 60 times 3 is $180. So again, if you're told that the price of apples is $3 per apple, we know that that directly tells you that if you buy one apple, it will cost you $3. At first, if you didn't have much experience with stores, that might seem like useless information. What good is it to know just how much one apple costs? Usually you buy a lot more than just one apple. But now we've seen that if you know how much it costs to buy one apple, that's actually very useful information because if you know how much it's going to cost you to buy one apple, you can easily figure out how much it would cost you to buy any number of apples. So now we can see more clearly why ratio units are used so often because they actually are, are very powerful and give you some very useful information that is useful in a bunch of different situations. This also shows us once again that ratio units are completely hypothetical. This is telling us that if you buy one apple it'll cost you three dollars. But that doesn't mean that you're actually going to buy one apple. It might be that you're going to buy two apples then it would cost you six dollars or four apples, which would cost you $12, or 60 apples, which would cost you $180. And also keep in mind, it's a totally possible, it's totally possible again, that you might, design, you might decide to buy no apples, and then it would cost you no dollars. So this does not tell us how many apples you're actually going to buy. It just tells you that if you bought an apple, it would cost you $3. Maybe you're not buying any apples at all. Uh, let's emphasize that point just a little bit more. Um, so let's say that I told you that somebody spent $12 on apples. Bob spent $12 on apples. Now, am I using here a ratio unit or a regular unit? Well, here we just have dollars, which is not a ratio. Let's write this out to be more consistent with the way we've been writing things. Bob spent $12 on apples. Now, is this a ratio unit? No, it's not a ratio unit. Also notice, this is not hypothetical. I'm telling you that Bob actually spent $12 on apples. So here we have a non-ratio unit. A non-ratio unit tells you what actually happened. On the other hand, suppose I tell you that at the store that Bob went to, at the store that Bob went to, the price of apples is $3 per apple. Well, that is a ratio unit, and that is giving you only hypothetical information. If I just tell you that the price at the store was $3 per apple, that just tells you that hypothetically, if you bought one apple, then it would cost you $3. I'm not telling you, we're not saying that you actually bought one apple. We're just saying what would happen hypothetically if you bought one apple. On the other hand, going back to the non-ratio unit, if, we tell you, if I tell you that Bob spent $12 on apples, this is not a ratio unit and it's not giving you hypothetical information. It's telling you about what actually happened. So now we can see a key distinction between ratio units and non-ratio units. Um, a non-ratio unit tells you about what actually is happening, whereas a ratio unit just tells you about what hypothetically could or might happen. Ratio units tell you about hypotheticals. Non-ratio units tell you what actually happened. We can see this is just a hypothetical. Um, this tells you what would happen if you bought one apple, and that allows you to figure out what would happen if you bought two apples, or three apples, or 60 apples. But all of these are just hypothetical. It's possible that you didn't buy any apples at all. On the other hand, if I tell you that Bob spent $12 on apples, now it's not possible that he didn't buy any apples at all. He must have bought a specific number of apples here. So this is non-hypothetical information. Well, this is something that we're going to see holds true for ratio units in general in physics and chemistry. In physics and chemistry and elsewhere, a ratio unit gives you hypothetical information, and a non-ratio unit gives you actual information. 
But we've also seen that even though this is hypothetical, that doesn't mean it's not useful. It's very useful to know the price of something, even though it's kind of even though it's really just telling you hypothetically how much it would cost if you bought one apple.